I'll just take a few minutes to also show you um, classification of data into class intervals where your class intervals are basically um, inclusive method of class intervals. So here the difference is that when I say a class interval I am going to take the class interval as 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and so on. Here often, the last interval, if required, can be 90 or you can leave it as 89. Right? Uh, the difference, bet difference is that here, the upper limit of a certain class interval is not the same as the lower limit of the second class interval or the following class interval. Now this form of taking data is most useful when you are collecting responses say via questionnaire method. For example, if you are asking these 30 students to mark themselves within these class of class intervals on the basis of their weekly pocket money, a person who gets $70 would be confused whether to include their data in the 60 to 70 interval or 70 to 80 interval. Now a statistician knows that it goes into this class interval but a layman or a respondent to a questionnaire might get confused. So to avoid such confusion we often use the inclusive method to collect responses or to collect data. The class frequency, if you notice, if you tabulate the frequency table, you will notice that the frequency table does not really change at all. Point to be kept in mind is that before we plot a graph using this frequency table, if you have your class intervals specified in the form of this inclusive method, you have to make a correction to the limits so that you can make it exclusive. How do we do that? You talk about a correction factor. Which is upper limit of the first class interval okay wait lower limit of the second class interval minus upper limit of the first class interval divided by 2 so if you see that so that would mean that would mean in this case 30 minus 29 divided by 2 which is 1 divided by 2 which is 0.5 now this correction factor has to be applied to the upper limit and the lower limit of each class interval so what you do is from the lower limit of each class I beg your pardon so what you do is from the lower limit of each class interval you subtract the correction factor of 0.5 in this case and to the upper limit you add the correction factor. 
So this would actually give us the corrected class intervals as 19.5 to 29.5 29.5 to 39.5 and so on. I'm really sorry about the handwriting today. But I hope you're getting the main point of this lecture. Right? Once again, these corrected class intervals will be associated with the same frequency. So there will be no change in that. But you have corrected your class intervals so that they are exclusive or what I mean is that the upper limit of one class interval is equal to the lower limit of the following class interval right um, keep this correction factor and how the correction how and when this correction factor is applied in mind we might use it when we come to the graphical representation of frequency tables